First of all, welcome to Barnet, or welcome back to Barnet in, in some ways. Uh, you must be really pleased to be here. Yeah, it's always nice to return to the club that uh, I was at so many years ago and uh, it didn't take a lot of persuasion to get me back, I have to say. You've come in as uh, head of performance, uh, a sort of a newly curated role, if you will. Just tell us a bit about what that role will entail. Yeah, a grand title, but basically it means I'm in, short, in charge of uh, everything to do with the physical uh, abilities of the player, so from sports science, medicine and physical conditioning. Um, and I work closely with Tim and ensuring we prepare for games effectively. The staff and I assist the players to be the best they can be physically and uh, make sure that Tim's got the maximum amount of players available for selection. Some people will recognise your name uh, from previous time by here in, in the early 90s. Just tell us a bit about that time with the club. Yeah, that was a, a really good time. Uh, obviously, Ray as manager, and uh, we had a, a number of players in the dressing room that kept me on my toes. We had you know, people like Alan Pardew, Sean Devine, Lee Howarth, uh, Limboy Primus, and, uh, and such. And it was a really good time to be around the club. Uh, what made you want to, want to come back to Barney? Um, I think it's because of what uh, the chairman was explaining to me the plans were here and how he needed uh, the things to change in, in order that we can try and regain our EFL status as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, we've seen the players and our training uh, in additional sessions after the main training with yourself and others. Is, is that going to be a, a new timetable for the boys just to get them back up to fitness and that's like Tim's mentioned already? Yeah, I think it's um, yeah, what, what we have to understand here. These, these players are professional athletes, they're professional footballers and with that comes a little bit of responsibility and uh, they're very privileged to be professional footballers. I'm very privileged to work in professional football. Every time we walk through the gate here um, and look at the facilities here, look at the pitches here, there's, there's people that have a, will pay a lot of money to play on pitches like this and to do what we do day in, day out. But with that comes a, uh, an obligation um, and a responsibility. And we try and install in the players that every time that they go across that white line on a match day is that they owe it to the supporters, they owe it to themselves, they owe it to the staff to be the very best they can be on those days. We can't ask for any more than 100% from anybody that does that, but we make sure that the players understand that, um, that they have that duty to, to the supporters in it to do that. I know when I announced you the big title was that you've worked with Team GB, between obviously leaving when we were at Underhill in the 90s up until now, what have you been up to? Yeah, well, I, when I left Underhill the last time, I went and worked at a number of football league clubs and uh, got great experience working with them, worked with some great managers um, and learned a lot. But I, I chose to, to move away from the jobs that I was doing in football into more of a performance role within Olympic sport. And very, I was very lucky, very privileged to go around the world at various World Cup events and various Olympic Games, leading a team for, for Great Britain. And uh, that culminated with a, a bronze medal in Sochi. And uh, after that, I decided that maybe I should go back to something that I really, really enjoy doing, and that's working within performance, within football. I know something that we've mentioned off camera is we have had a number of injuries this year, but not too out of place really within football when you look at even from the Premier League that with the whole Covid situation there's going to be injuries this year. Yeah I think that um, I, I don't know another club that uh, hasn't had an issue uh, similar to what Barnet have and um, the games are coming thick and fast. Uh, players didn't really have what you would call a traditional pre-season where they could prepare effectively. You knew the time that you were going to be playing, you knew the time that you were going to be training. That was a bit up in the air and when the league announced when the fixtures was, I, I think that there wasn't a national league club that had prepared as well as what they'd hoped they could have prepared. And when the games come in thick and fast, playing Saturday, playing Tuesday, games being cancelled because of Covid, it upset the rhythm. and. When players get injured in short space of time, it's a cumulative effect. So in a normal traditional season, you would have time to get those players back up and running. We, we haven't had that luxury here. And I guess part of my job is to come in here and, and make sure that the infrastructure and the system is in place to, to get those players back as quickly as possible.
working with Tim, obviously a former international goalkeeper, Premier League winner, what's it been like working with him, even in the short time that you've been at the club? Oh, it's um, when Tim was appointed here, I, I was excited because you know very similar to to Ray, you know, as one the the top division in England, been an international goalkeeper. I was very intrigued to see if there was any similarities and. Yeah, there are, and uh, Tim can certainly make himself heard, like Ray could. Um, but uh, I'm impressed with Tim's organisation. Really, really well organised, plans everything out, and the first thing we wanted to put in place here was a structure uh, to make sure that everybody knew what their job was, when they had to do it, when the players needed to be in, what they needed to do when they were in, and what their responsibilities are. With you coming in, is it you mentioned about changing almost the structure behind the scenes. Is that working with Dimmy, the, the physiotherapist, just to sort of utilise the hands that we have got here at the club? Yeah, um, Dimmy is continuing his role as, as physiotherapist for the first team. And uh, my job there is to, to help Dimmy as much as I can. Um, Dimmy is the physio, not me. And uh, we've brought in people to help Dimmy because his workload was great and he needed some help. And we needed to make sure that he was timetable effectively in the areas where he's going to make the most difference and we've brought people in to help him now. Um, my job is to act as a resource for Dimmy. If Dimmy needs anything then it's my job to go and get it for him. Just lastly, things on the pitch at the moment not as pretty as I guess the fans, anyone associated with the club would want it to be but slowly but surely with this new backroom effort from and with the appointment of Tim you think we'll get back on the right track? Yeah, no, no one likes to be in a relegation position and, and we, when you look at the table it doesn't make good reading but I look at that as an opportunity because it, if the club wasn't in that position I probably wouldn't be back here um, and I've been brought in to do a particular job and I'll do it to the best of my abilities. It, yeah, the, when you look around the dressing room, the players that are in there, we shouldn't be in the position we're in. Let, let's be honest. You, you don't have to be a sports scientist, you don't have to be a top physio, you don't have to be a top coach to realise that we're behind the curve. Okay, we're, We need to work harder, we need to work more smarter, we need to be more effective in what we do. Um, okay, and that's why we're here. And it's going to take time, it's not going to happen overnight, but already we're seeing some of the changes to the positive. Tim is trying to recruit players in that know what to do in this league, know what to do in this situation. That's not an easy job given where we are, players you know, are not wanting to come to clubs that are, are struggling, they want to be successful. But with Tim's contacts and with the way we're working, that, you know, that will change. Um, yeah, nobody likes to be where we are, but it's a, it's a challenge and it, it's one that I, I relish and one that we, we will turn around.